notice the title, mm -hmm. 18 years, mm -hmm. Trouble by Satan. Mm -hmm. It's a good title. Mm -hmm. But first, mm -hmm. we'll have a song led by David Lee. Hello, this is our song. Out of my shameful failure and loss, Jesus, I come, Jesus, I come, into the glorious gain of thy cross. Jesus, I come to thee. Out of our sorrows, into thy balm, out of life's storms and into thy calm. Out of distress into jubilant song, Jesus, I come to thee. Out of unrest and arrogant pride, Jesus, I come. Jesus, I come into thy blessed will to abide. Jesus, I come to thee. Out of myself to dwell in thy love. Out of desp despair into raptures above. Upward for a on wings like a dove. Jesus, I come to thee. Out of the fear and dread of the tomb, Jesus, I come, Jesus, I come, into the joy and light of thy home. Jesus, I come to thee, out of the depths of ruin untold into the peace of thy sheltering fold. Ever thy glorious face to behold. Jesus, I come to thee. Amen. Eighteen Years Troubled by Satan. That's the title of our lesson. We read in the Bible. In Luke chapter 13, Jesus taught in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath day. It's the day of rest. Now maybe you ask me, what does it mean a synagogue. What is a synagogue? It's a meeting house for Jews to worship in. In Jesus' time, it was also a school for children to learn how to read. It's very, very interesting when I read that. It said the children would come and sit. And the teacher would write a letter like A, B, C. He would write it down in Hebrew. Remember, it wasn't English. He would write it down in Hebrew. And he would pour honey on it. So that if you can read it right, you can lick, uh, you can lick it. The ch children were excited. So he held it up and they would say, Hey, you're right. They lick the, the parchment, the papyrus, the, the honey. It's very interesting what they did a long time ago in school, in their synagogues. But let's go back to our story. In that synagogue, there was a woman that had a spirit from the devil inside her. It would bother her. The spirit made the woman crippled 
for 18 years before they her back was always bent she could not stand up straight her back was always bent she couldn't stand up straight she couldn't the woman had been troubled by the devil for 18 years what was wrong with her her back was so bent that she couldn't stand up straight So now we have a clear understanding. Let's go on. This is a picture of a woman with the same problem in modern times. Probably in South America, I'm not sure. But the, the picture shows a woman bent over. She can't stand up straight in the same way. Poor woman. When Jesus saw her, he called her. Woman, your sickness has gone away from you. <clears throat> Jesus, put, Jesus put his hands on her, and then she was able to stand up straight. And she praised God. <clears throat> Jesus spoke to the unfortunate woman and put his hands on her. And the woman was well. She could stand up straight now. And she praised God. What happened when Jesus saw this poor woman? He told the woman she was healed from her sickness. He put his hands on her and healed her immediately. <clears throat> when the woman saw she was healed, she praised God. <clears throat> there was joy throughout the synagogue. They were happy about the woman being healed. It was wonderful. All was well, right? Well, not quite. There was someone who spoiled the joy. It was young. They were angry. <coughs> the synagogue leader was angry. Yes, angry. Why? Because Jesus healed on the Sabbath day. <clears throat> wow. The leader said to the people, there are six days for work. So come to be healed on one of those days. <clears throat> Don't come for healing on the Sabbath day. Was the synagogue leader right? In his Ten Commandments, God did say a person should work six days, but on the seventh, seventh day, rest. What was Jesus' answer to the synagogue leader? The Lord Jesus answered, You people are hypocrites. Some deaf don't understand the word. We sign it hypocrites. Why? 
because you have one face on top of another. Like being sad, right. or putting on a mask in front that's smiling, but it, behind it they're mad. That's what he's saying, hypocrites. Mm. Why? Yeah. You say hypocrites? All of you untie, mm. and you let go, re release your work animals, mm. and lead them mm. to drink water mm. every day, mm. even mm. on the Sabbath day. This woman that I healed is our Jewish sister. Now remember, Jesus was born Jewish. He grew up Jewish in, in the Jewish culture. He grew up in the Jewish religion. So that woman was Jewish. That's why Jesus called her a Jewish sister. But Satan, the devil, has held her for 18 years like a prisoner. She's been bent over. She couldn't stand up. She had to bend over. The poor woman. Surely it's not wrong for her to be made free from her sickness on the Sabbath day. This reminded the people in the synagogue that they led their work animals to water every day, even on the Sabbath day. You see, the animals are thirsty. And on the Sabbath day, they should ignore them. They'll still be thirsty. Maybe it's a hot day. They're thirsty. But no, they untie them. And they lead them to water so they can drink and feel better. God's not against that. Jesus said the synagogue leader and his supporters were hypocrites. All of them were hypocrites. Why? Because people pitied their thirsty work animals and untied them and led them to water on the Sabbath day. So why did the people not pity the woman who was held prisoner by Satan for 18 years and not able to stand up straight? They had no pity on her. They criticize Jesus for doing that. Mm. It's wrong. When Jesus said this, all the men that were criticizing him felt ashamed of themselves. He's right, because they have pity on work animals and let them drink their water. And all the people were happy for the wonderful things Jesus was doing. All the men who, in the synagogue, who copied the synagogue leader and criticized Jesus, realized that Jesus was right and were ashamed of themselves. Can you maybe see a, imagine a picture of people going and, and being sorry, but they were happy for the woman. Jesus had pity on the woman and touched her, making her well. In the same way, Jesus has pity on all of us. But why? Because of our sins. Sin prevents man, and he can't touch God. Sin blocks us. We need to be 
be free from our sins to connect with God. Sin blocks us from God. In Romans chapter 5, it says, But Christ died for us while we were still sinners. Jesus forgives us. Wow. Remember when they crucified, G crucified him, they cried out, Father, forgive them. Father, don't know what they're doing. In that way, God showed us that he loves us very much. Yes, God loves you. Maybe you had a bad past. Maybe. If so, don't worry. Jesus loves you. He pities you. He wants you to repent of your sins and turn to him. He loves you that much, yes. One story says that Jesus says, I love you this much, and he stretched out his hands and died for us. Jesus wants to take our sins away. That's why he died on the cross for us. Jesus died, but he was raised from death, and now he lives. He's not dead, he's not buried. He's alive now. Jesus showed himself alive to his followers. After, then after 40 days, after his resurrection, he was taken up into heaven. He ascended. Someday in the future, we don't know when, Jesus will return to earth and take back his people, or take his people home with him. This is a beautiful verse and I love it. John chapter 14. Jesus said, Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust in me, meaning Jesus. There are many rooms in my Father's house. I would not tell you this if it were not true. It is true. I am going there to prepare a place for you. After I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back. Then I will take you with me so that you can be where I am. It's a beautiful passage. When you read it, it gives you comfort. It's true. Jesus talked to his 12 followers. But still, it applies to all of us. Wow. Jesus is coming back for us. Coming for you and for me. Are you ready for that wonderful day? Jesus pities you, yes, because of the sin. He wants to see you free from your sins. The woman who couldn't stand up for 18 years. 18 years sounds like a long time, but really it's short. Most of us have been deaf all our lives. I'm now past 80 years old, and I'm still deaf. I was born deaf. 
Do I complain? No. I love my Lord. I have faith in my Lord. I hope you do too. If you're deaf, don't worry. Jesus still loves you. Jesus wants you in heaven with him forever. Father in heaven, we thank you for your love for us, for your pity on us. We are truly ashamed of our sins. We turn away from them. We know that we are not perfect, but you love us. You loved us enough that your son died for us, that he would shed his blood, that we might be washed clean. We thank you for that. And we can't imagine how your son suffered, how it seems that it broke his heart as Jesus hung on the cross. But we thank you for having mercy on us. Help us to believe in you more. Help us to trust in you more. Help us to follow you, your son's teachings. We thank you. Through Jesus' name, amen. <coughs> this is our contact information. Feel free to contact us if you want. Many times, I'm not in my office, but still you can leave a message. And it's easy for me to get back to you. I hope that you will if you have questions. May God bless you, and we still love you. <coughs>